This week, the Supreme Court hearing arguments on two cases that could have major impact on online speech, content, and social media. The justices may be deciding if companies can be sued for personalizing what you see online. The family of Noemi Gonzalez is suing, arguing that YouTube is liable for her death. She was killed in a terror attack in 2015 in Paris. The family claims YouTube allowed ISIS to post hundreds of videos and that YouTube's algorithms steered potential terrorists towards more radicalizing content. So far, the justices have seemed skeptical that the tech giant should be on the hook for how the Internet works. You know, these are not like the nine greatest experts on the Internet. <laughs> And I don't have to, I don't have to accept all Ms. Blatt's, the sky is falling stuff. We're finding that Google isn't protected. And maybe Congress should want that system. But it, isn't that something for Congress to do, not the court? And now mm. we're joined by our Nine News legal expert, uh, Whitney Trailer, who joins us. And it sounds like the court doesn't want to handle this. It sounds like, uh, obviously, publicly, maybe they're not equipped to handle it from their own personalities, their own education much less whether the court versus Congress should be looking into these types of liabilities. I think it's a little bit of both, and that was Justice Kagan actually acknowledging that. Justice Kavanaugh, throughout his, he asked some questions saying, uh, you know, is this above our, should this be with Congress? Justice Alito at one point said, sir, I have no idea what you're talking about right now. But the function of the Supreme Court is to interpret whether or not acts by, of Congress are constitutional. So this is technically a, a, an appropriate use of the checks and balances. This is what the Supreme Court should do. Now, in, in the same breath, I'm going to say, or the next breath, I'm going to say. Are they equipped that, to do it? Are they equipped? And they alluded to that. That's why they were essentially saying, look, Congress, you should do this. And they, the reason I think they said this, which is relevant, was they recognized the importance of their ruling because this could have far ranging impacts on the internet and how it's used and what we have access to. Well, the, this, the, the court and the justices almost always like to reach back, sometimes way back, and refer to James Madison and refer to the all of these the forefathers as to how this yeah. how this was all written and handled when the well, obviously <laughs> this ain't in there this right. is not in the book no and it's interesting though because this is really how our common law system works so this was all based on the communications decency act of 1996 which that was a law that congress passed so that it said internet service providers would not be liable for the content so you think about the craigslist killer you know, they weren't liable for what happened once people joined up together. And so that was the issue. But here, now the question is, well, is YouTube and Google, the owner, are they actually providing content when they, through the algorithms, make those suggestions? So when we're all watching a YouTube video, I've been watching these, I work out on this BOSU ball, and I've been on my <laughs> BOSU ball. And, and then you get all those advertisements and things more about that stuff. Not even the advert. This is actually a little different. Now I'm getting things on hip, um, you know, tight hips and all on these how other to, things. Yeah, how to stretch, And the yeah. videos, they start up um, automatically. And so what they're saying here is that people who may have been susceptible to uh, being recruited by ISIS were directed to these videos, and therefore YouTube is now providing content. Yeah, it's not just there. People are being steered and yes. fed certain things, including things that could be radicalizing. That's exactly right. So they call it unsolicited, rec unsolicited recommendations. But Google's response, they're saying, well, guys, if we, we have this standard algorithm, it's not unique to a certain industry. And they're saying, look, if we're not able to do this, you will get, we have 3.5 billion uh, searches a day. Mm -hmm. You would get a billion unsolicited uh, solicited videos. Because, you know, and I just read an interesting article in The New Yorker saying that, you know, the, the, uh, the Internet has gotten too easy because now you don't even have to really use any comprehensive words. You start to even type it and it already pops. It already knows what you're looking yeah. for. And so they're saying, look, if you could make that algorithm more difficult where people have to, but they're not going to do that because it's all about getting clicks and then the advertisement. Interesting to see where that goes because yeah. that they're, they're complaining that their business model would be hurt. And I don't know if the business model is going to be a good argument, but uh, we'll see. We'll see if it ends up sticking with the court or if it ends up in Congress. But we certainly yeah. will talk about it again with you when we get you next time. Thank Sounds you, Whitney. Good. All right. Good to be here.